So our simple system is a flashlight example. So we're going to create a model of a flashlight. And uh, in so doing, we want to address some basic questions about the flashlight. What are its requirements? What does the flashlight do? What are its parts? And how are they interconnected? What do the parts do? And what are some of the key properties and performance characteristics of both the flashlight and its components? Having taught this class in, in other uh, venues, I often ask the, the, the class to create a model of a flashlight when they first walk in uh, into the class, just based on the tools and practices that they currently use. So for this exercise, we did something similar. We got a, a set of engineers together uh, here at ANSYS, and uh, we asked the participants uh, from different engineering disciplines. They were systems, they were software, they were hardware, and we asked them to create a model of a flashlight and answer the questions that I showed on the previous slide. Uh, they had very little time to do this. It's just 25 minutes, but it's you know kind of a quick and dirty exercise, but still gives you some some insights in how the different engineers approach this. So the participants created a variety of different artifacts, and I'm going to show you just a few representative examples here on the right. Uh, they're in small fonts; can't read them very well, but it still gives you a, a, a sense of what of what they produced. So one of them was um, just a set of flashlight requirements written in, in, in text, and this is classic. This is what we would expect, that uh, part of the map, I, I asked for what are the requirements, and somebody comes back with this set of requirements. Um, uh, you, can, you can read them there. And um, another engineer came back with a set of artifacts. And again, each engineer typically came back with two or three or four artifacts to address the questions that, that I asked. But in this case, it was kind of like a functional flow diagram. It was kind of a unique and interesting way to express it. But even though you can't read it, those are different functions that the flashlight performs over time. And uh, this flashlight, more of a, a block diagram showing uh, the different elements of the flashlight and uh, some of the functions that they perform. And uh, an additional artifact looks something like this, looks like a flashlight, again addresses some of the elements. Um, so these were all really good examples of what a typical engineer uh, produces, a good engineer produces, with the tools that they have at hand. The, when I asked the participants what, you know, what, what are the tools that they would use to create these artifacts, they said they'd use a variety of different tools. They'd use Word, they'd use PowerPoint and Visio and even CAD tools to uh, generate these different artifacts. So all good. But what this points to are some of the challenges. And you can see that, that that one of the challenges is the ability to manage the integration of this very diverse range of artifacts. And particularly as the complexity of the system increases and the project size increases, more and more people involved in the project, with people doing things, if you will, in different ways and different level of precision. And so the specific challenges are that people are using, you know, different documents, different tools, uh, different terminology. There was no shared terminology there. Different representations. And the interpretation is basically that of informal diagrams and in text. And text. So there's no, if you will, more formal semantics behind those models. They're basically informal draw diagrams, if you will. So this just reinforces the challenge that I talked about in part one and what motivates 
the need for a model-based system engineering approach where you bring all this data together into a single integrated cohesive system model. I would point out that this challenge increases even more when you consider the fact that the project evolves. It's not static. It, everything changes over time. So these artifacts, and there can be many of them, they're all changing somewhat asynchronously, sort of on their own schedule. And so the, the ability to try and manage the integration of all this data over time is indeed the challenge that we're trying to address uh, with MBSE.